Hello there. You will all know that papers, of course, have authors and that there are certain criteria that determine if somebody is eligible for authorship on a particular scientific paper. But that's not where it stops. This is actually where a lot of the discussions and negotiations will start. This is because the order in which authors appear on a paper is not random at all. There is meaning to these authorship positions and there are three main authorship roles that have to be decided for every paper generally and this is who is the first author, who is the corresponding author and who is the senior author. The first author is typically the person that did the work and or also wrote the first draft of a manuscript. The corresponding author is the person that submitted the paper, dealt with the editorial office and will later on also be available for questions once the paper has actually appeared because it's their address and email and contact information that are published in the paper. And the senior author is typically either the person that had the idea or that wrote the grant or that supervised the whole operation in some form or other. Now, these positions are so important that often on papers, the authors decide after discussion that these positions can be shared. For example, you can have shared first authorship. You can also have multiple corresponding authors and you can also have shared senior authorships on papers, for example. So these positions can be shared most frequently. I think it's among two people probably in our field, but there have also been situations where that particular authorship role is shared among, let's say, three people. Now, what's, if there are more authors than that, then there is middle authors, and these middle authors had also other various roles in the paper that are not quite as prominent as these three roles we just talked about. Now, very often they are listed actually alphabetically, by last name typically, but even within the middle authors, there can be different groups. So sometimes on papers with a lot of authors and like say global surveys or very large experiments, you will see different groups of middle authors where the alphabet starts again. This is probably because some of the authors, or in some of the cases I'm involved, I know it's some of the authors have been more involved in the writing of the manuscript, let's say, and other groups of middle authors have been more involved in providing data for, let's say, a survey or a large experiment. And so there is also a structure within the middle author sometimes. Now, beyond that, there is also basically a little credit section in almost all journals and the number of journals that require that is steadily increasing. That is basically the author contributions statement where there are short statements that come with the initial of the, any given author and they state what that contribution was. For example, contributed reagents or did the statistics or wrote the first draft or curated the data or whatever. And so these roles are then listed basically like, a, like credits at the end of a movie um, where these roles of the various authors are given in greater detail. But of course, this is not what's listed on your CV, right? What is listed on your CV in the end, that is the order in which a paper appears in terms of the authors and not that credit statement. And this is why this is important because these different authorship positions come with a different amount of kudos or let's say credit that is given to them. So the first author in our field is a very important role because it's clear that this person did most of the work, wrote the paper, did the study, did the experiment or led that entire operation, let's say, if it's more a synthesis activity. And then another special role is basically the senior author, which is very often, but not always, also the corresponding author. The first author can also be the corresponding author, or it can be another author even. And you know these, these come with different amounts of kudos, which is why these positions are talked about, negotiated and discussed. And it should also be realized that actually this is not universal, that um, what is the most important, I think, in, in our field. In, and in Germany, let's say in, in, in Europe, first author and senior author are the most important authorship positions. But in other countries, like China, for example, is a prominent example, the most important authorship role is corresponding author, which here, <laughs> I think most people wouldn't care, at least in my field, who is actually the corresponding author. What's important is first and senior author. That's pretty interesting. And actually to make things even more complicated in some other scientific fields, if you have ever looked in physics papers, you will find that there is 
an unusual pattern that usually people with a last name starting with A are the first author. And this is because authorship there is typically just alphabetical. So the authorship order plays absolutely no role in some fields. So basically, <laughs> you should just know about it. You should know the authorship order is not random. It's something that reflects the relative contribution and the kudos that goes to different people that are involved in the study. You should know about it so that when you enter a discussion, you should know what's at stake. And that's really what this is all about. And with that, have fun with your next paper. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.